Okay, welcome back. Image Gallery Part 2. Okay, in this podcast, I rarely talk about Photoshop, mainly because it's kind of a beast unto itself, um, and we're here to deal with, um, with web development and coding. But I really do, because we're having to build an image gallery here, need to take a step back. And we're going to work with Photoshop and actually Adobe Bridge for a second on how to prepare your images for this gallery. Okay, And so right now I'm in Adobe Bridge. I'm in CS3. And uh, this step is not required or essential, and you don't have to use Photoshop for, for all this. But um, I'm going to show you, most people do use Photoshop, so I want to show you some easy things you can do uh, inside here. Okay, I have a folder with my images in it here. And um, if you don't know how to navigate to it, it is on the desktop. But if I go under here on the left side of the screen under Favorites, and I can go down and select Desktop, and then on the desktop I can select Images, because that's my folder. Double click there, and it opens up. Now here are my images. Now what I want to make sure is we're going to need two copies of each image. We're going to need the large image that blows up into the, into the browser, and we're going to need the small thumbnail. Okay, So we're going to need to go through and make sure these are optimized for both situations. Right now I don't have my thumbnails built yet, I just have the core image. So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and open one of these. I'll just double click on it and uh, say open image. It's going to open this in Photoshop. The first thing it does is it gives me this embedded profile mismatch warning. Okay? What I typically do is I convert all the document's colors to the working space, Okay, because I don't want to have color shift issues when I'm done. So I'm going to select this middle thing here. I don't want to discard it, and I don't really want to use the embedded profile right now. I'm going to convert it to my working color space. Say OK, and it will open the image up. And here we go. Let me move this over so we can see it here. Okay, now, first of all, a couple things I'm going to do is if I hit the letter F on the keyboard, it will switch to full screen mode. And if I hit it again, it switches to really full screen. And then if I hit it again, it switches to a black full screen. So you can toggle that around. I'm going to work full screen here so we don't see bridge in the background here. And then uh, what I'm going to do here is the first thing you need to do, now these images are sized right now, but let me show you how to change the size if, it's, if you're working off a scan or a high resolution image. What I'm going to do here, and this is, may seem fairly obvious, but bear with me because there's a couple adjustments that I typically make in here to keep my images looking really good. If you go up under the top menu under Image at the top, and I'm going to change the image size. Let's go down and select Image Size. Okay? And it's going to give me the Image Size window. And you can see here that I have a couple mismatches going on. First of all, this is resolving at 240 pixels per inch. And I want to optimize these for screen view. So it needs to be 72 pixels per inch. So what I'm going to do here is uh, we have kind of two ways you can change the dimensions here. You can change the physical width and height of the image. And what you want this to be, I ta I'm going to target these to be about 500 pixels for the longest you know, uh, dimension. So if, if, it's, if it's a horizontal landscape oriented image, I would make this 500 pixels wide. This one's vertical, so the longer dimension is going to be the height. So I'm going to change this one to 500. We're already at 500. But uh, if you go down here to the resolution, this is how many pixels per inch you have. And most of you know that screen, uh, computer screen resolves at 72 pixels an inch in most cases. So that's what I want to target this as, is 72 pixels an inch. Now, if I go ahead and select this and start typing 72, everything changes. Look up here at the top now. My width and my height have changed now to 100 by 150. Okay, so this is actually going to change the entire size of the image. And I don't want to do that right now. I just want to change the resolution of the pixels. So if you forget where you are, this is how you reset. If I hold down the Option key on the keyboard, you'll notice I toggle that back and forth, that the Cancel button turns into a Reset button. So I'm going to hold down Option, I'm going to click Reset, and it resets it to where I am. Okay, what I want to do is I want to take this box at the bottom where it says Resample Image and deselect that. Now, when I change my resolution, I'm just changing the resolution, I'm not changing the size of the image, I'm not resampling. Okay, So that's what you want to do, is, is change that to 72 pixels, go ahead and say OK. Notice the image does not change. Now it just changes how many pixels are within an inch. Um, which is now 72 instead of 240. Now, if you do need to resize your image, let me show you one other trick you might want to uh, involve yourself with. Let's go back under the image menu at the top of the screen again. Let's go down and select image size. And let's say that this is now, mine is sized correctly. Um, you want it to be about 500 pixels, give or take. Uh, let's say that I'm resizing this down to, so I can show you how it works, let's resize this down to 300 pixels. Okay? Well, we know that we need to resample the image for this. I need to physically change the size of the image. I'm at 72 pixels, so we're good there. So let's resample the image now. 
Also, I would do this in two separate steps. If you're, if you're doing both changing the resolution and resizing the image, it's going to keep your image sharper in the end. But now we're going to resize it, and I want to go down to 300 pixels. And you'll notice that this is locked over here, so it's going to change the width um, accordingly within the same ratio. And before I hit OK, let's go into resample image down here. I'm going to use the drop down menu, and you're going to notice that there is uh, several options that you have for resampling an image. Actually, there are five. You can use nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic, by bicubic by smoother, and sharper. I always use when I'm going down in size, I want to retain the crispness and the sharpness of the image, so I always select bicubic sharper. And they do note on there that this is recommended for re reduction, so that's why it says best for reduction. So I'm simply going to select that. Now, if you're going up, if you're scaling up, it's really tough to do in Photoshop or in any program because you're creating pixel information that's not there. But what you would want to do is, is retain your smoothness. Uh, and that's going to be best for enlargement. So those are really the two that I deal with. Some of these preserve hard edges is, is really good for line art if you're doing something like that. You don't want aliasing, stuff like that, or anti-aliasing. Um, so anyway, so we're going to preserve the sharpness. So let's go with bicubic sharper, select OK, and now we have reduced the image and maintained the sharpness so it still looks good. Um, so anyway, in this case, I'm going to undo this because we are actually... Let's do undo image size. I'm at the size I want, which was 500 pixels at its longest dimension. Okay, so once you've gotten here, everything looks good. Your image is sharp. You can continue to refine it and do levels adjustments, things like that. I'm not going to worry about that in this segment right here because really what we're worried about is getting these ready for um, uh, to be optimized for the photo gallery. We may do some separate podcasts later uh, that get into Photoshop because it does get pretty uh, vast as far as uh, the possibilities that you can perform in here. But anyway. Okay, so I am ready to save this out now as a JPEG for my images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up under the top under File. Now I'm not going to do Save As. What I'm going to do is go down here and select Save for Web and Devices, which is also Option Shift Command S. It's a four key combination if you want the shortcut. And what's great about this is go ahead and select that. Is it going? It's going to give us a um, a big dialog here or a big option window here. And what it's giving me right now is it's giving me um, two images or two renditions of the same image, one on the left and one on the right. Now what's great about the Save for Web and Devices is it allows you to preview what it's going to look like depending on how much compression you're putting on this image. Right now, if you look on the right side of the screen, um, and there's presets in here you can select or uh, let's just do these manually for now. There's a, there's a JPEG. Uh, preset. I can change this to a GIF file, a PNG, etc. Let's leave this on JPEG because it is a photograph and that's going to look best um, reproduced as a JPEG. And then right here, here's some sample resolutions. I have it set at maximum. The quality is 100. If you pull all this all the way down to low, okay, you can start to see ever so slightly, and this is a black and white photograph, but I want to show you what you're looking for. <clears throat> quality is now set to 10 out of 100, or one-tenth the quality of the image. If you look at the image on the left, this is the original image, so you have a reference point of how it looks in the beginning and how good it's supposed to look in the end. Now if we swing over to the right, I want you to see sound, down in these areas, you start seeing some banding and some pixelation. And this is what the JPEG compression does when it's set really heavily. Okay, Look at the bottom of this pane real quick, and you can see it is a JPEG, and it's only going to be 5K, which is a pretty small file, and if you happen to be on an ancient 28.8K BPS modem, it's only going to take three seconds to load, so it gives you a time estimation, which is really nice. But you can see over on the left-hand side, my original image was 4, 40, 4, excuse me, 486K, so I'm really compressing the you know, bejesus out of this, really, um, and it looks bad. Um, so you're going to have a trade-off. You want the smallest file size possible, but the best quality. Okay. There's a couple things I can do to offset that. If it really has to be this low, I can select the blur function over here, and I can start adding some blur to that. It'll raise the file size a little bit, but it'll try and control those banding areas. And you can see this is compressed so heavily. Look over here, it blurred the banding, but you still see it. In fact, it blurred the whole image and it just looks cruddy. So I don't want that. Let's go back over here. Let's pull the blur down to nothing. And let's raise the quality on this. Let's go up to medium. And that fixed some of the banding. There's some still there. It's still a blurry image. Let's take the blur off here. Um, let's go up to high. 
and you can start to see that the sharpness comes back, okay? However, it's an expense of bandwidth here because at the bottom, it's a pretty good looking image on high now, but you can see it's 18K. Now, 18K is really not that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. So I'm gonna use a high quality setting or, or, one, or a 60 out of 100 on the uh, quality, the qualityometer over here. Anyway, that's good enough for what we're doing. Now, I mentioned this in a podcast like a zillion podcasts ago, but these are black and white images. You're not gonna see the problem here as much, but sometimes, you will when you're working on images for the internet you're gonna see a color shift occur with these two images and this is simply because Photoshop the way it ships out of the box when you install it on your computer is it is automatically set it's kind of set up for for um, for people who are doing print work because Photoshop is a pretty powerful program for that and Adobe I guess they intend fire or fireworks to be more of what you're going to use for for web optimization but if you're using Photoshop what you want to do here is right under the preset menu over here on the right hand side of the screen there's a little arrow and if you click on that it gives you a drop down menu okay and what you want to do is I want to make sure that convert to sRGB is deselected it comes selected by default so if you're looking at this for the first time you'll see I just had a color shift there even though it's black and white. Let's go down there. Make sure you turn that off, convert to sRGB. What it's doing is it's taking your color space and it's converting it over to sRGB and that's where you're gonna experience a color shift, okay? So you wanna make sure that is deselected, okay? I just wanna go with straight up what my color profile is and that's what we wanna save out. Otherwise, you're gonna experience some color problems and that may or may not annoy you depending on how inner retentive you are. I am, so it annoys me, so I make sure that's off. Let's go ahead and say save. It's gonna ask me where. What I wanna do is create a folder of images, save that to the images folder, and go ahead and say save and you're done. Now that's how you're gonna go ahead and optimize each one of these images for the large image, okay? Now, we need to make thumbnails. And if you remember in the last podcast, I was using small square thumbnails for each image. Uh, and so it's actually, you're gonna to have to save this out as a second image, okay? So let me show you the shortcut. And the easiest way to do this is we're gonna to have to do some cropping, obviously, because it's square, and we're gonna to have to do some size reduction because it's smaller than the original. There's a real quick one-step way you can do this. Go over to the left-hand side of the screen on the toolbar here, and I'm gonna select the crop tool, okay, which is this one right here. It's also, you can hit the letter C on your keyboard. That's the shortcut. Okay, now up at the top, under my uh, properties menu here, you can see I have the crop tool selected and it gives me this little, some fill-in options for width and height and resolution. Okay, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and set this so it's preset to the square that I need, okay? So I can go ahead and tell you that in my specific example, and your mileage may vary depending on how you're designing your image gallery, <clears throat> but my thumbnail images were 75 pixels square. So it's gonna be 75, make sure you fill in PX here and I'll tell you why in a second. So 75 space PX. Let's tab over to the height. You can hit the tab key or you can click with your mouse. And if I just add 75 and I don't put a measurement after it, let's tab over to resolution now. Look at what it just did. It put 75 inches. It's going to be a hell of a lot bigger than 72 pixels at 72 pixels an inch for screen. So you don't want to do that. Make sure you have PX filled in. Otherwise, this will spaz out on you and you'll sit here for hours wondering what just happened my image just blew up in size this doesn't work and you know you waste a bunch of time so make sure this is 75 px it's very important you need your unit of measurement in there okay and the resolution we do need to give it a resolution here and make sure it's 72 pixels per inch okay now when i select the crop tool notice that when i click and drag across the image no matter where i click and drag to it always maintains a square ratio Okay, that's because we've defined it as 75 pixels by 75 pixels, okay? So let's go ahead and let go. And what this does is it gives us a crop window. I can move this around. I can resize it if I want. And this just gives you the exact crop that you want image-wise. And I'm just going to double-click in the middle here. And, sorry, double-click. And there it goes. It has made a thumbnail image for me that is 75 pixels by 75 pixels at 72 pixels per inch resolution. So now all I need to do now is go up under File, select Save for Web and Devices, and this is now gonna be the thumbnail, okay? Let's save this out real quick. And I wanna show you something. Here's the folder right now with all my, because I've already made these, uh, with all my images in it. And I have 12 images in this particular folder. Now, what I wanna show you here is, is, uh, is um, I, I, for my naming conventions, it's real important to name these something simple right now because it's an image gallery that's going on one page. You can see that I've just named, labeled them one, two, three, four, five, whatever, etc. .jpg. 
and the thumbnails, I simply put a T next to it. So I know just by glancing into this folder without even looking at the images that here's the first image and here's the thumbnail that goes along with it. Okay, And that's real important to do because uh, even though I can't see which image that is necessarily, it is important that I can see that is the image and that is the thumbnail that it's associated with. So again, uh, I would follow a naming scheme that's like that because we want to keep this as simple as possible. The idea is to build a image gallery and not build a nightmare. So anyway, just consider that when you're saving your images out. What you want to do is repeat this whole process on all of your images. So if you have 10 images, you'll need to do it nine more times. If you have 20 images, you'll need to do it 19. But you get in a groove with this, it moves fast. So anyway, so create your thumbnails and we're going to move on to the next part here.